Good evening, friends, and welcome to this special briefing on the Honorable President's forthcoming visits to Papua New Guinea and New Zealand. As I had mentioned in my previous briefing, this is the first time that we are having a bilateral visit by Honorable Rashpatiji to these two countries. To brief you on these two very important visits, I have with me Sri Venu Rajamani, my colleague, uh, who is Press Secretary to the President, and Sri Jaydeep Mazumdar, who is Joint Secretary South. Uh, I think Joint Secretary South will give you a broad opening statement, which will tell you the uh, main issues uh, that are expected to be taken up uh, during this, uh, during these two visits. Uh, what are the outcomes that we expect? Uh, this will be supplemented by uh, Press Secretary, who will maybe give you some more intimate details of the President's program, and thereafter we can open this up for question and answers. So, with that, I give the floor to Jaydeep. Thank you, Vikas. Good evening, friends. As uh, Vikas uh, told you, uh, Rashtrapati ji is paying state visits to Papua New Guinea and New Zealand. Uh, this is from the 28th of uh, April to the 2nd of May. He will be accompanied by an official delegation, uh, which includes uh, the Honorable Minister for Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare, uh, Sri Sanjeev Balyan, and a multi-party delegation of members of parliament from both houses of parliament. Firstly, PNG, that is Papua New Guinea. Uh, Rashtrapati ji's visit is the first ever state visit of the President of uh, India to Papua New Guinea. In fact, uh, it is the first ever high level visit from India to Papua New Guinea. He is going there as a guest of the Governor General, Sir Michael Ogio, and he will have meetings with Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and other leaders. As you know, uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Papua New Guinea uh, had visited India last year for the second FIPIC summit. In um, Papua New Guinea, uh, Rashtrapati ji will, uh, apart from his meetings, will also ha address a business event and an Indian community event. And he will deliver a speech at the Papua New Guinea University. This visit uh, is part of our growing engagement with the Pacific Island countries. As you know, the first uh, FIPIC summit, the Forum for India and Pacific Island Countries Summit was held in uh, Fiji, and this was followed last year by the second summit, which was held in uh, New Delhi and Jaipur. Uh, so this uh, is a progression of that engagement. Uh, Papua New Guinea is the largest um, country among the Pacific Island countries, uh, with a population of about 8 million little less than 8 million, and it is also the largest in terms of geographical size, uh, almost half a million square kilometers. It is a country rich in oil and gas, and in minerals like nickel, cobalt, gold. India has had a high commission in uh, Papua New Guinea since 1996, and Papua New Guinea has set up a high commission in New Delhi in 2006. In fact, uh, Fiji and Papua New Guinea are the two, only two countries among the Pacific Island countries where India has a resident presence. All other countries are concurrently looked after from other nations. As I said, uh, the, the uh, Prime Minister of uh, Papua New Guinea had visited India in 2015, and the Speaker of the PNG Parliament had visited India in 2013. Papua New Guinea is looking towards India for many of its development needs, such as in the health sector, capacity building in uh, IT, agriculture, and infrastructure development. And a line of credit is being finalized for infrastructure projects to be done by India in Papua New Guinea. The country also is home to about 2,500 Indians and they are mostly educators, doctors, other professionals, and members of the clergy. The agreements are under negotiation uh, in the areas of uh, agriculture, IT, infrastructure financing, and health. Moving on to New Zealand, Rashtrapati ji is paying a state visit to New Zealand as a guest of uh, Governor General. Lieutenant General, the Right Honorable Sir Jerry Mataperi. 
this will also be the first ever visit by the President of India to New Zealand and is therefore viewed with great anticipation. Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi had visited New Zealand in 1986, which was the last high-level visit from India to New Zealand. The, Governor General, the then Governor General of New Zealand had visited India in 2008 and 2010, and again in 2011. Prime Minister John Key has also visited India in 2011. Recently, our two Prime Ministers met in a bilateral meeting on the margins of the Nuclear Security Summit in Washington on the 1st of April this year. During his visit, Rashtrapati Ji will have meetings with the Governor General, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, and the Leader of the Opposition. He will also address a gathering of top New Zealand businessmen. He will also address an Indian community event hosted by our High Commissioner. Rashtrapati Ji will address the students and faculty of the Auckland University of Technology and will interact with Indian students there. According to New Zealand Country Strategy paper, its goal is to have India as a core trade, economic, and political partner. The visit is aimed at realizing that goal. New, De New Zealand has traditionally been a friendly country to India. It supports India's aspirations for permanent membership of the UN Security Council. It is home to a very large number of I persons of Indian origin and Indian citizens. This number is about 175,000 and constitutes the largest group of skilled migrants. Out of this 175,000, as many as 67,000 are born in India. The number of students, Indian students in New Zealand has grown exponentially over the last few years. It now numbers about 23,000, and last year alone, the growth was about 67%. New Zealand is also a magnet for Indian tourists. Last year, 43,000 Indian tourists went to New Zealand, and from the New Zealand side, there were about 25,000 tourists to India. As some of you might have seen, uh, several Malayalam, Bengali, and Hindi movies have been shot recently in New Zealand and uh, it familiarizes us with the spectacular scenery of New Zealand, which is a draw for our tourists. For the visit, apart from the strengths in agriculture and uh, dairy farming that New Zealand brings, it has certain unique uh, high technology uh, skills and strengths as well. Um, as some of you might know, uh, our many of our security systems that we use, whether it is in the Indian Parliament or it is in Hindustan Aeronautics, or in ISRO, or several other locations are uh, developed and installed by a New Zealand company. Our uh, uh, Mumbai police uses amphibious boats, which are manufactured by a New Zealand company. Uh, the Coast Guards of India uses uh, jet propulsion engines in their patrol boats that are man manufactured again by a New Zealand company. Uh, air cargo handling systems, conveyor belts, and even design of uh, several uh, malls in India uh, has been done by a New Zealand company. Uh, apart from that, New Zealand has uh, great uh, technological abilities in cold storage supply chain management and post-harvest technologies which are of interest to us. Agreements and MOUs in the field of uh, air connectivity and education are expected to be signed during the visit. Uh, with this visit, we hope to energize and upgrade our bilateral relationship to a new level. So thank you for your attention. Venu, would you like to supplement that? Thank you, Vikas. Um, friends, uh, good afternoon. The President of India is uh, eagerly looking forward to his visit to the Papua New Guinea as well as New Zealand. He sees the Pacific region as a natural extension of our immediate neighborhood, which is Southeast Asia. And with our Look East policy having evolved into an Act East policy, the Pacific region has gained in even greater salience in both our strategic thinking as well as our economic engagement. Most of India's foreign trade, as all of you would know, flows through the sea lanes of the Indian Ocean as well as the Pacific. These lanes bring us the bulk of our energy, whether it be oil, gas, or coal. 
India shares a large number of commonalities with the two, with the region as a whole and the two countries that he is visiting in particular. Democracy is the most important of them all. English language is a common factor. The fact that these, both these countries have vibrant economies is an important factor. And both of them have a uh, significant Indian diaspora, which cements the relationship. In recent times, as Jaitib mentioned, uh, Bollywood and Indian films have been a factor which has brought our in New Zealand and India together, just as much as cricket has always been a common link between the two countries. As far as Papua and New Guinea is concerned, uh, Jaydeep mentioned the fact that uh, during the FIPIC summit, the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea was here. Uh, he was received by the President uh, in Rashtrapati Bhavan. Many of you might recall the fact that uh, this happened almost immediately after his spouse passed away. Still, the President went ahead, did not change this important international engagement and met uh, the leaders of the Pacific Island countries who had come, including the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. He sees his visit as marking a new beginning. Both these countries, it is the first time ever that a state visit is taking place. The goal is to establish a much stronger relationship with Papua New Guinea, which is the largest, both in terms of population and geography, as has been mentioned. India also has the largest volume of bilateral trade with Papua New Guinea over US dollar 200 million. And the president hopes that this visit will be a precursor of intensified economic development as well as security cooperation, which will help us realize the untapped potential in bilateral relations with Papua New Guinea as well as with New Zealand. Uh, let me mention that uh, the president uh, in, his, in the various capacities uh, that uh, in which he has functioned in the past has never had a chance to visit the Pacific Islands, so he has never been to Papua New Guinea before. He has never been to any of the Pacific Islands uh, before. He has been to New Zealand previously in 1995. He went there for the Commonwealth Summit, the Auckland Commonwealth Summit. Those who, a few who have read his, the second volume of his memoirs, you will find uh, a detailed section there narrating his experiences in Auckland. That was the summit when P President Nelson Mandela uh, attended for the first time after being released from prison and he was the hero who dominated the entire summit. It was also a summit uh, where, which was held immediately after there was a military coup in Nigeria and uh, the Commonwealth uh, collectively, India, South Africa and all of the countries uh, were very strong in uh, voicing their concern and their unhappiness over the fact that a democratic regime had been overthrown in uh, Nigeria. So the Auckland summit was very important for many reasons, and that has been recorded in detail in the president's memoirs, which you may wish to look at before those who are traveling with the president or those who are watching the visit closely. The president has not been to New Zealand after, so that was his first and last visit. Uh, just one minor detail, uh, Jaydeep had mentioned that a multi-party delegation would travel along with him. Uh, the minister, Jaydeep, has already mentioned there are three members of parliament who travel with him. One is Mr. Pradeep Bajwa of the Congress party, Rajya Sabha from Punjab, Pratap Singh Bajwa, sorry. The second is Sri Ram Swarup Sharma, BJP member, Lok Sabha from Mandi, Himachal Pradesh. And the third is Dr. Hari Babu from Vishakhapatnam, Andhra Pradesh, also from the Bharti Janata party from Lok Sabha. Thank you. Good, the floor is now open for questions. Sharmaji. <laughs> you didn't listen carefully. Well, the, pres the, the president um, leaves on the night of 27th and returns by noon of the 2nd. Uh, my question is specifically to Jaydeep. You mentioned that uh, they are interested uh, in your Papua New Guinea is very much interested in the healthcare sector with India. But the unfortunate part of it is that the government over there, Papua New Guinea, has not allowed Indian companies there, Indian pharma companies' entry is not there. 
neither the medicines, they are not, pa people of the Papua New Guinea is not getting the benefits of the chief m uh, medicines of the Indian Pharma Company. And the question, to a related question to this is, in light of uh, the recent development of TTP, the RCEP uh, is, um, the uh, negotiation is uh, in process and it is taking place in Perth. So can you tell us the details of, of some of the uh, highlights of the RCEP negotiations? And I'm, uh, we hear that there are some problems in the area of uh, intellectual property rights, which is under uh, negotiation. And that TP, TPP members there are stressing to dilute the intellectual property regime. I thank you for those questions. Uh, firstly, on the issue of Indian pharmaceuticals in Papua New Guinea, uh, the Prime Minister has uh, lifted the ban on Indian pharmaceuticals as of January this year. And uh, therefore, uh, he, uh, the government of Papua New Guinea is uh, very keen that Indian pharma companies come back into Papua New Guinea. And we are looking at uh, uh, a variety of uh, instruments by which uh, the health sector in Papua New Guinea can be assisted. Uh, with the lifting of this ban. On uh, the negotiations that are going on in um, uh, regarding RCEP, uh, I will not uh, hazard to go into the details of it. Uh, firstly, uh, of course, uh, this is uh, a press briefing for pur specifically for the purposes of the visit of the uh, President to Papua New Guinea and New Zealand. But apart from that, uh, let me just say that those negotiations are progressing. And uh, uh, on our side, we have certain uh, uh, reservations about uh, pushing uh, trade in uh, goods at the cost of services. Uh, so therefore, we are maintaining the line that there has to be a comprehensive look at both issues. And uh, IPRs are, of course, issues that we will address uh, uh, within RCEP. They have to be addressed. So those negotiations are progressing, and uh, it is not I would not go so far as to say that the, some TPP members are undermining IPRs within the RCEP negotiations. I will leave it at that for now. Uh, sir, uh, as uh, we know that Papua New Guinea is very rich in oil and natural gas, and there are some companies that are operating there, they're supplying gas to China, Japan, and other Southeast countries. Whether, looking, whether we are looking at any kind of a cooperation in the energy sector. And secondly, what Benu has mentioned about security cooperation. Can you elaborate on that? What kind of security cooperation we are expecting? Uh, again, thank you for those questions. Yes, uh, on the issue of natural gas, uh, Petronet of India has a, an MOU with Petromin of uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, they have a 22.5% offtake right on LNG uh, from the Gulf terminal. Um, they have not yet chosen to exercise that right, uh, but it is there. And uh, not only Petronet, but uh, other Indian um, uh, oil and gas majors uh, would also be interested. And uh, this is something that we will pursue after uh, the, the visit. That is one. On security cooperation, uh, security itself is uh, a very wide, has very wide connotations. Uh, we have security from traditional uh, factors as well as non-traditional factors such as, uh, you know, piracy, um, uh, uh, poaching of uh, fishing uh, rights in territorial waters, etc., in an exclusive economic zone. So as we have offered, even during the FIPIC summit, uh, coastal surveillance radars for Pacific Island countries. Uh, uh, we are open to uh, assisting them with uh, patrol craft uh, to uh, patrol their maritime uh, uh, areas. So these kind of cooperation are what we have offered to the Pacific Island countries. Thank you. Tripti. I heard you mention that there are 23,000 Indian students uh, studying in New Zealand and uh, a discernible rise of 67% registered last year. 
Do we have a corresponding figure in terms of the students coming from New Zealand? And do we have any exchange program to encourage those students coming here? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't have the figure of New Zealand students uh, studying in India. I'm sure New Zealand High Commission should have those figures. There are no other questions, okay. Mukesh. Sir, uh, can I ask something else other than this topic? This since is a press conference exclusively on President's visit to Sir, Papua New Guinea Don and Isa New Zealand. Is very hot today. There is no other issue that will be addressed stand. at this press conference. This is exclusively on the President's visit. For other questions, there is a press conference at 4 p.m. on Thursdays. Sir, uh, it would be too okay, late. That concludes the press conference. Thank you all. No. Just Don Kuniza. nothing